Dr. Mindy here, and on this video, I am going back to the basics on fasting. Okay, so I wanted to go back and really make sure that we created some foundational lessons here on my channel on how to start to fast appropriately and get the most out of fasting. If again, you're new to my channel, I just wanna point out that what I teach here is fasting variation. I call it a fasting lifestyle, where we show you how to go in and out of different fasts. I show you how to go in and out of different eating styles. So in this video, I'm gonna go through five foundational principles that you need to know about intermittent fasting. First thing, why do you need to intermittent fast? I actually got asked this question on a podcast interview the other day, and I was like, oh my gosh, yes, that's like the elephant in the room we should probably all be talking about. And the reason that we love intermittent fasting and the research is so good, why so many people are jumping on board, is that you have to remember you have two energy systems. One where you pull energy from the foods you eat and one where you pull energy from the fat you burn. The easiest way to tap into the fat burning energy system is through fasting, specifically intermittent fasting. So the number one reason is because if you're just eating all day, you're never accessing the fat burning energy system. And there's a whole neurochemical world waiting for you there that will help heal you and help you lose weight, make your brain stronger, slow the, age, slow the aging process down. So many miracles happen over here. Second thing I wanna bring, we're talking intermittent fasting, so I wanna bring your attention to two of my favorite studies on intermittent fasting. The first, New England Journal of Medicine, December 2019, did a meta-analysis of over 1,500 peer-reviewed journal articles and had determined that intermittent fasting should be the number one line of treatment for conditions like obesity, diabetes, Alzheimer's, dementia, MS, a few other autoimmune conditions, some pre and post surgeries. The list was quite impressive yet not everybody knows how to do intermittent fasting. So we're gonna get you the skills you need on how to intermittent fast on this video. One of my second favorite intermittent fasting studies, women, you guys should know about this, that they looked at over 2000 women that were going through breast cancer, traditional breast cancer treatment. And what they found is that if they intermittent fasted after they were done with the treatment, they had a 70% less reoccurrence of that breast cancer. That's crazy. So if you want to prevent breast cancer, let's get you intermittent fasting. If you're going through breast cancer, let's get you intermittent fasting, bottom line, okay? So to me, that's why. We have an energy system that heals. Intermittent fasting is gonna teach you how to do that. Okay, so how many hours is intermittent fasting? A lot of you guys have different opinions on this. Um, I'll tell you what I like. I like intermittent fasting as a 13 to 15 hour window where you are not eating. So the, that window starts the minute that you put food in your mouth, the last bite of food that goes into your mouth, the minute after you chew it all up, goes down into your stomach, that starts the minute one and you can go 13 to 15 hours out from that point. If this is gonna be a stretch for you, in the menopause reset, I have steps, you guys, where I put in my fasting chapter, I put down all the steps that you can do to slowly build yourself up to this 13 to 15 hour place. So I just can't emphasize enough how 13 to 15 hours is phenomenal. Okay, third thing, once I decide to eat, what do, how do I break my fast? This is a question we get a lot. So with intermittent fasting, you're only 13 to 15 hours without food. So what you break your fast with is really almost anything. You can pretty much do anything, but there are some strategic things that we like to encourage people to break their fast with. For example, fat. Fat is a phenomenal way to break a fast. Um, I like avocados. I live in California. Some of my favorite food is an avocado. I, lo I love nut butters. I love ghee. Um, we also, if you guys like MCT oil, I'm a fan of Bulletproof's MCT oil, C8 MC MCT oil, those kind of things. Uh, Andreas seed oils, I put them in scoops in, of tablespoons and just drink them straight from my spoon but it really helps to break it with fat because it'll stabilize your blood sugar and fat will, will cause a hormone to be secreted called CCK. 
CCK goes up into the brain and tells the hunger hormone to shut off. So those of you that are nervous about binge eating after you intermittent fast, try breaking it with fat because it stabilizes hunger and keeps you in ketosis too. So fourth thing, what, or once I fasted, I broke my fast with fat, okay, now I'm gonna eat. What am I gonna eat? So we like for you to do what I call ketobiotic. If you are just new to this, I wanna give you three foundational principles to food that I want you to use while you're practicing your intermittent fasting. So the first one is I want you to pull out all refined carbohydrates. So these are the breads, the pastas, the cookies, the crackers, pull those out. Step number two, I wanna make sure that you're eating good oils, not bad oils. I've done several videos on, the, on that. I'm sure my team will link it here so you can find those videos. But let's swap out your oils. And then the third thing that is really important when we start to intermittent fast is that we get rid of the toxins. So these are really toxins in your food. These are your nitrates and the red dyes and the blue dyes and all the preservatives that artificial coloring type foods. Those will actually, uh, even things like NutraSweet, those will make you more hungry. So if we pull the carbs out, we swap the fats out, we pull the toxins out, you're gonna find 13 to 15 hours is actually quite easy to do. Okay, I gotta interrupt this video because I have a free guide for you so you can master fasting. It's called A Beginner's Guide to a Fasting Lifestyle. And all you've gotta do is click here and you can jump right in. Okay, last thing, number five, and this we get all the time, Okay, well, what can I drink in my fasted state? So, uh, ideally water is the best, but if you like coffee, you can drink coffee. I have two requirements on coffee for you. One is that it has to be mold free, and two is it has to be chemical free. So it needs to be organic. We have resources on our website to show you my favorite toxic free coffee, but Toxins make you insulin resistant. So this is not go to Starbucks. This is, okay, let's lean into some coffee that's a little cleaner and that will keep you in a fasted state. Now, if you wanna put raw cream in there, that's, that's fine. You wanna put some butter, some C8 bulletproof oil. You can put that in there. So you can have coffee, you can have key, tea, you can have water. I'm gonna give you a little hack trick that I like when I'm fasting. I lean into mineral water, specifically uh, Grolsteiner is one of my favorite because it's high in potassium, which is a mineral that fasters lose a lot of when they start fasting, usually longer than intermittent fasting. So there you go. There are the five things. That is literally like the foundational way that you start to fast. If you got a copy of the menopause reset and you're reading through it and you're like, oh my God, I wanna start fasting now. This is it. This is where you start is in this video. Okay, so if you love this video, you're gonna wanna check out the next video in my fasting series. I know that fasting helps you lose weight without changing your food, but if you're intermittent fasting and gaining weight, then I really recommend that you look at three food changes.